Isandlwana, a terrible British defeat at the hands of the Zulu army on the 22nd of January 1879. It's a battle that has been covered extensively on this channel, so do see my other videos for more on the background. There's one controversial point that still upsets and angers people, and that's the Zulu torture and mutilation of those poor little British drummer boys. But what is the truth? Did it actually happen? Let's find out. Well, there are a number of primary sources that refer to Zulu atrocities against those little drummer boys. Trooper Makin was with the King's Dragoon Guards. He visited the site of the battle in May 1879, long after it was finished, and he wrote, The first we saw was a little drummer boy, his drum broken in, his head cut off and placed on his chest. His hands were inserted between his ribs. We then came across the poor fellows laid in groups of five and six, every one of which had been mutilated by those savages, and all were laid naked, every article of clothing having been torn off them. We came across a large wooden structure like a double scaffold, where two other boys had been hung up by their hands to the hooks, and as they had decomposed, their bodies had fallen to the ground, where they lay with no friendly hand to give them a decent burial. End quote. Paints an awful picture, doesn't it? Others have shared similar stories. Then, of course, there's this famous painting by Charles Fripp that clearly shows a young boy at the battle. In the classic book of the Zulu War, The Washing of the Spears by Donald Morris, I've got a copy right here, he writes of the 12-year-old boy who refused to give his battalion's ammunition to Simeon Kambule of the Natal native horse. Surely that's all the proof we need, isn't it? It was clearly a lot of kids fighting there for the British. Well... The fog of war is thick here. To find out what really happened, I turned to two sources that I trust. One is a paper online by KZN tour guide and historian Pat Rundgren, a man I know personally. And another is the book Zulu Rising by Ian Knight. I've put links to both of those in the show notes. Firstly, let's look at how many little drummer boys were present at Isandwana. Okay, wait for it, wait for it. That's right, none. Drummers in the British Army actually had to be adult soldiers. As an aside, they actually played the bugle to transmit orders. They didn't even play the drums. Oh, and another key responsibility of the role was to conduct floggings. Not exactly a job you would give to a small child, I would think. There were 12 men in the 1st 24th Battalion with the rank of drummer who were killed at Isandwana. The youngest was 18 and the oldest were in their 30s. Ah, uh, okay, I hear you say, but is that not just semantics? We all know that the British Army at the time did allow boys to join up. Well, that's true. Underage soldiers, often the sons of men serving in the ranks, could join up and were given the actual rank of boy soldier or boy. Now, I've seen bitter disagreements online concerning what I'm about to say. You know how people love to get mad behind their keyboard. Arrgh! Now, of course, there's a strong possibility that the soldiers had lied about their ages when joining up and could be younger than they claimed. But according to Ian Knight, my go-to source for pretty much everything Zulu War, a study of the muster rolls of the battalion shows that of the five soldiers in camp that day with the rank of boy, the youngest was Joseph McEwen, aged 16. Look! Okay, so now we've cleared up the ages of those little drummer boys, what about the other accusation that they were deliberately tortured? So, if you've watched my other videos about the war, you may have picked up on the fact that there were a number of Zulu battlefield rituals that did involve desecrating the dead, or what we in the Western world would class as desecrating the dead. For example, many warriors would stab a brave enemy multiple times. His stomach would be slit open to allow his soul to escape and often his clothes were removed and worn by the Zulus themselves. To someone not acquainted with the Zulu way of war, these rituals can seem quite disturbing. But we have no reason to suppose that soldiers were tortured, or that the youngest soldiers were singled out in any way. The Zulus certainly did not take prisoners. They killed you on the spot. Not a particularly pleasant way of fighting a war, but a far cry from capturing and torturing you to death. Now, of course, there's always the chance that the rogue Zulu went around mistreating the wounded before dispatching them. But as Captain Penn Simmons of the 24th later said, and this is a quote, no single case of torture was proved against the Zulus. The wild stories current at the time and repeated in the English papers were quite untrue. 
end quote. So there we have it guys. The arguments will continue probably in the comments section over this, but I think Ian Knight and Pat Rundgren make a strong case. Subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below.